And as always, we leave you with our Everybody Has a Story segment. This week, Cody Pomeran sat down with Yale College Dean Mary Miller. Miller's time as Dean, which started in 2008, is drawing to a close with the end of this semester. During her tenure, Yale has dealt with questions surrounding sexual misconduct and mental health, made important changes to university career services, and also has seen the growth and movement forward in the building of two new residential colleges. Here are a few highlights from that interview. Dean Miller, thanks so much for being here. My pleasure. Pleasure so, to talk to you. You're returning to academia and, and full-time teaching. What do you think should be Yale's criteria, not only in hiring teachers, but, but rewarding them and, and retaining them? There's obviously the famous phrase in academia, publish or perish. Does Yale place too much emphasis on scholarship at the expense of actually hiring good instructors? Over the past few years, one of the things I have uh, seen and played a very active role in is how teaching uh, is considered at the time of promoting faculty to positions of tenure. And in all the tenure committees, one of the things that we now expect, it's not as though um, this can be brushed under the rug, is what is the role for good teaching? And how do, how do departments have the opportunity to coach individuals? How do we take advantage of the fact that we have had here someone like Joe Handelsman, whose um, credentials as a national leader in the teaching of STEM led President Obama to recruit her to Washington for a couple of years to head his, his Council on Science and Technology because of her belief that science teaching has, uh, has, has by and large, uh, quite a distance to go to catch up with the success of pedagogy in other fields. Um, I think Yale is now an incredibly successful incubator for all different kinds of pedagogical innovation. Um, whether it's the, it's gotten pretty routine to have a flipped classroom, but in fact your flipped classroom can't be successful unless you have the kind of incredible set of tape lectures that a Paul Bloom has, or a Lori Santos has, um, or a Steve Stearns has. So that having these kinds of tools, and it's one of the uh, ways that the university has invested in making it possible for faculty to innovate. Now let's switch to some more uh, student-centered issues. Uh, there were no students initially on the ad hoc grading committee. Um, there was no student rep representation on the presidential search, and there was a major push to ensure that there was a student on a search for your replacement as Dean of Yale College. What do you think the role of students is in university governance? Obviously, we have a new YCC president by the time this interview airs. What areas should students have influence? And more importantly, are there areas where students shouldn't have influence? It's such an interesting set of questions you ask, Cody, because there's so many different pieces of this. Um, I do think that there are uh, so many important roles for students to play on uh, the committees of Yale College. And in fact, students play uh, some of the most key roles in some of the most important committees. For example, the Executive Committee, Teaching, Learning, and Advising, Course of Study. All of our standing committees that uh, are part of how student life um, how student life and academics unfold. We've also worked really carefully with different uh, YCC standing committees that will often serve in parallel and as sounding boards. So the Dean's Advisory Committee is a committee that I meet with several times a year specifically uh, in order to take the pulse, sometimes in order to figure out what are the problems that we haven't been thinking about in Yale College? For example, uh, we have off and on during my tenure been spending a lot of time thinking about career services and being able to take the advice of the uh, Student Advisory Committee uh, at least once a year about career services really led to the reinvention of that office, 
We are on our third director of it in my time here, and we have had exceptionally uh, engaged students uh, involved in the various searches and thinking about what, what should an office like this look like in the 21st century. So there are different kinds of, there's all student committees that can serve advisory to me, and I believe now the president and the provost also have student advisory committees to um, be able to act in an ad hoc way. And after the student advisory committee worked with the ad hoc committee on grading in the first year of its existence, students were appointed in order to become part of something that looked for a while as though, how long is this committee going to last? Is it going to become one of the standing committees where we would normally appoint students? At the same time, uh, I think this is one of the interesting questions about governance altogether, is that Yale is not a democracy. What we hope it is is an in, in, that there are informed decisions that act with advice uh, from many different, uh, whether it's the formation of the faculty senate, whether how the faculty will register their concerns about the academic review committee, that one wants to, what, to be able to go out and ask the question, what are we missing here? How do we make this um, a better document? Um, because so many decisions actually roll up from, say, the faculty to the corporation, or from me to the officers, to the president, to the corporation as well. We'll shift into our, our last part of the interview, which is just a speed round of fun questions. We do this at the end of every interview, so they're quick, enjoyable. First one, President Salve, mustache or no mustache? No mustache. Number two, design of your own Mayan headdress. What would it look like? Um, a lot of endangered species. Number three, this is one we asked both President Levin and President Salve, have you ever had a Wenzel? Never. Never. You know what one is, though. I do. I do. But I worry that, like Bill de Blasio, it's going to be eating the pizza with a fork and knife to admit to never having eaten a Wenzel. Oh, well, it's on camera now. <laughs> Don't worry. President Salve knew what it was. President Levin, less so. I think that was the fork and the knife situation. Okay. Not on my diet, I think. Number four. One thing you think all Yale students should do before graduating? Obviously, commencement is coming up. What should these seniors run to at Yale before graduating? Yale University Art Gallery. Unbelievable in its transformation and as it reopened on 12-12-12. Number five and our final one. Names of Yale residential colleges. What should we be looking for? Any, any famous Yale alums that stick out in your mind? The corporation has said it may not be for a living person, and that they reserve the right to make to to offer that name. Um, and there are some great 19th century names. Um, while I was master of Saybrook College, I worked very hard to make the name of Edward Boucher more prominent by putting him in a his name over a beautiful entryway. Um, I don't know what college you're in, but Saybrook and Branford have the names of the great worthies up to 1917, and they could never have even thought about Edward Boucher. So sometimes we go back into the deep past to try to make sure that we see the stones differently from this distance. Um, I'd say think about one of the things to consider is perhaps a town, or perhaps the city of New Haven itself. And one of the names that I'm most fond of, I think not very high on anyone else's list, is Hill House, uh, for whom we have a street, um, but who is an active evolutionist. The most beautiful street. The most beautiful street in New Haven, in, in, New, in uh, the United States, um, uh, so it was said in the 19th century. But I think uh, uh, as an abolitionist, a uh, member of this community, and someone, an activist, who was committed to a change that he would not fully see, uh, that is what we all want to be. Well, I am in Brantford, so we've got a good sibling rivalry with, with Saybrook next door. Dean Miller, thanks so much for joining us, and congratulations on six years.
Thank you. And thank you for joining us as always. For YTV, I'm Cody Pomerantz, and you can look for more Everybody Has a Story segments coming up. We've got a special one, a surprise one for commencement, so we'll see you then. To see the full interview, go to the YTV website under the Features page.